You're on a mission to improve breast cancer screening. Tell me what the proposals that you presented in Parliament yesterday are designed to do. Well, I presented what you remember as a 10-minute rule bill, which is um, a way for backbenchers to flag issues of concern to them. And, and you remember when you were in the House, I, I was public health minister and the cancer minister and spoke a lot about this subject, but I never I never spoke why. Um, and yesterday I told the House why, which is you know the tragic loss of my mother to it um, when she was just 52 years of age, so four years from where I am now. And, um, you know, I've been working in this sector for a long time and I've been working with breast cancer now for, for years. The pandemic, to say, has not helped is an understatement. So we reckon that between March 2020 and April 21, because we suspended the breast screen programme, in the region, 930,000 fewer screenings took place. Now, now suspending the breast screening program was something that we, we we must never do that again. But the consequences of it are that, that NHS England's own figures reckon that there are about 9,000 uh, people living with an undiagnosed breast cancer. Now, now, anybody who has been through a breast cancer battle will know the, the potential danger that that can spell. Uh, we've often said that early diagnosis is cancer's magic key, and that is true in all cancers, but it is particularly true in breast cancer because about 98% of women who have breast cancer detected at stage one will go on to live uh, five years uh, at least, and, and many of them a full, normal, healthy life. So what I presented yesterday was the breast screening, uh, NHS breast screening programme bill, which was around um, learning from the pandemic, uh, making sure that we catch up on these missed appointments. So, for instance, we cannot carry on with these open invitations to breast screening appointments. The evidence shows that when you're given a timed appointment, uh, the take up is much, much better than an open invitation that people say, well, that's something that I need to do, but I don't necessarily get round to. There was also elements in there about familial breast cancer. So, you know, if you if you have breast cancer in your family, then then, you know, we need to make sure that we are asking screening you more routinely through local breast screening services, not just through the national program. And so it's a real sort of, I guess it's a, a superhuman effort to make sure that we catch up and make sure that we diagnose more breast cancers at stage one, because it is a completely treatable disease, or almost completely treatable disease at that stage. And you, you mentioned that it's not just a political mission, it's personal for you too. Just tell us a bit about what happened to your mum. Who died at? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, like 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 so many, you know, she she was diagnosed um, with breast cancer and and battled, um, but you know, it, it it wasn't caught early enough, and so you know, I as I said yesterday in the House of Commons, I was on my stag do in Wales, and I got a phone call very early in the morning to say I need to get back uh, to 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 my part of the world quick sharp, and you know, and she passed away a couple of days later, which was five weeks before my wedding day. Um, and you know that you know you know what it's like, Gloria, in Parliament. You know people come in with different missions and different different motivations. And there's no question that your life experiences shape you in the house and shape the things that you're interested in. And uh, you know I chair the breast cancer all party group with Sharon Hodgson, who you know well, for for five years. And then you know I was incredibly fortunate when Theresa May asked me, um, you know, what I wanted to do in government. I said I want to be the cancer minister. <laughs> she said, Well, that's very specific. Most people normally just want to be a minister. I said, No, I want to be the cancer minister. And uh, and I specifically did because I, uh, I'm, on a, I'm on a mission and I was in office and I still am now to see that we diagnose more people early with cancer and there's a to say there's a lot of work to do is an understatement the government's intentions are great in this place you know there's a very good new cancer plan that Maria Caulfield the cancer minister published recently I, I, I don't doubt their intentions on this but I, I, I do, I do think that we have a workforce challenge in the cancer community, for instance, which is making it very difficult. And I, and I saw the select committee put, put something out in recent days on that. Yes. Yes. And speaking about that, uh, Professor Dame Jane Dacre, the ex-president of the Royal College of Physicians, uh, when giving that evidence, said cancer services are facing overwhelming pressure claiming that the NHS is unlikely to be diagnosing 75 percent of all cancers at stage one or two by 2028. That's the government goal. The experts are concerned it's not going to be made. 
Yeah, it's it's the government's got it's my it's my policy. I, I wrote the policy, and I, I I still think it's the right policy for the reasons that, that I that I that I said. Early diagnosis is the magic key. Um, so so that is that is tremendously important. It's also education. So you know the touch look feel campaign around breast cancer has been incredibly effective in the past. You know um, when Jeremy Hunt and I were at the Department of Health. We instigated the FIT test, which is, you know, to put it bluntly, poo in a post, uh, which has been incredibly helpful at, at spotting bowel cancers. Um, so there's lots of lots of ways that we can do to detect. But I was also, you know, the Minister for Prevention. And, you know, we Matt Hancock, who was then by then the Secretary of State, made prevention a real focus of his work. And, and obviously the pandemic then, then took over. But there's an awful lot more that we should and could be doing to prevent cancers. So, you know, it's around weight management. Uh, you know, if you if we're not serious about tackling child obesity, then you know we are overweight children become overweight adults, and being overweight is one of the biggest risk factors in in diabetes development and in cancer risk. And Cancer Research UK have been very very clear about that. So it's about weight management, it's about diet, of course it's about smoking. I mean, smoking is the biggest preventable killer in this country today, um, and you know we are we're not doing anything like enough. Uh, to prevent uh, smoking and to get smoking cessation services up and running. It's why I supported an amendment yesterday in the House, which unfortunately wasn't successful, about around the polluter pays. Uh, it's a policy that I that I wrote when I was in office about a, a levy on the tobacco companies to to make them pay um, for smoking cessation services to to get more people off the six.